What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Welcome back with another one with all the crazy events going on in the world. I thought I would bring you something very exclusive, something to maybe take your mind off of it before we get started. Uh, before I introduce the guest that you see on your screen, uh, rest in peace and much love to the family of uh, George Floyd, who was uh, brutally murdered by a racist cop in Minnesota. As we are taping this today, the memorial service just went down. Everybody was in the building. Kevin Hart, Ludacris, Reverend Al Sharpton, and others were in attendance. I'm sure by this time you had enough of that news and you can get that anywhere. What you can't get anywhere is what I'm about to bring you now. Uh, if you've been following this channel, you've been following this movement, you know that this is Griselda Central. We're big fans over here. We're down with the movement. Uh, I got on late. A lot of people like to tell me that in the comment section. Uh, a couple years ago when I caught the freestyle, I believe it was on Hot 97, uh, Benny the Butcher, West Side Gun, tore the building down, and then I had to go in deep. And ever since then, my life has been changed by this, uh, what I would call the new becoming of Mob Deep. Some others might say uh, Wu-Tang, and we might get into that later. So I would like to know the backstory. That's the important part. Where did these guys come from? First of all, when I heard it was from Buffalo, I went bananas because I hadn't heard nothing come out of Buffalo uh, since Rick James, of course. Uh, there is a mystique surrounding this crew, this movement, this organization, Griselda, three high-level lyricists, the business acumen of West Side Gun, who I have termed a genius. And there's so many layers to the story and I'm always off the mark when I'm talking about this shit and y'all always try to correct me in the, in the comment section. Well, y'all don't got to correct me no more because the man you see on your screen is the man with the inside scoop. If you're familiar with that GXFR logo, a lot of y'all use that for y'all avatar. We all love it. We all want it on the hoodie. I, of course, would like to have a jacket. Can't get it too exclusive. The man who invented that logo, who brought that into existence, who partnered with West Side Gun on that fashion line years ago. My man Ron Ski, better known as Ronald Reagan, the head designer, CEO, founder of those Reagan era fashions, is on your screen right now, exclusive to the Mike Power Show. Ron Ski or Ronald Reagan. Welcome to the Mike Power Show, and thank you so much for granting me this opportunity to talk to you about such an important movement. Salute to you. Man, salute to you, man. Salute to your whole movement. Um, I also, you know, want to have a moment of silence for the, the, the man that lost his life. So we'll do that now. And, uh, Real talk. yeah, you know, thanks for that. And, uh, yeah, you know, I appreciate you allowing me to come onto your platform and, uh, you know, I guess give, give a little bit of, uh, of insight on, you know, what I can tell you from my perspective of the West Side Gun movement with Griselda and, uh, you know, everything that I've experienced personally on my own account. Okay. Well, well, thank you for that. I certainly appreciate it. Now, um, how long have you known West Side Gun? Uh, I've known him for about twenty-two years, twenty-two, maybe twenty-three years. And where did y'all? Where did you first connect with West? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Where did you first connect with West Side Gun? How'd y'all? How'd y'all hook up? Uh, I connected with West Side Gun in school. Um, it was in Atlanta or the Atlanta, Atlanta metropolitan area. Um, I, I met West Side Gun in high school. I, it was my senior year of high school. Um, I was new to Atlanta. I'm originally from uh, Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, so it was my senior year of, of high school, but it was, uh, it was West Side Gun's uh, sophomore year of high school. So, um, Okay, so, so West was down in Atlanta. Years. Yes, this is down in Atlanta area, yes. Okay, now I know so, Wes is from um, Buffalo. So how did he, what was the precipitation that caused him to be in Atlanta as opposed to Buffalo? Um, He probably was in Atlanta for the same reason why I was in Atlanta. You know, um, it was 
we had family there and it was you know a lot of violence and a lot of uh you know wrong things going on that you could become victim to if you don't leave you know so his his him being in buffalo which is you know has the highest murder rate and you know it's this very bad place you know the town that i'm from is equally as you know it has all of the negative connotations of the you know the inner city and you know no hope mm -hmm. and you know that whole vibe so i think that you know someone that was in his camp being his his grandmother um thought that it would be better if he would you know go to atlanta where it's less of the uh, riffraff mm -hmm. so and i want to get this out on the table and be be clear from the jump because i believe the gxfr logo which is something i, I believe i saw in the rolex video west side gun sky zoo uh, I became enamored with that logo as soon as I saw it, and that and that scorpion, as you can see, I'm rocking mine. You know what I mean? Um, Got gotcha. you. So you are the designer of the G of that GXFR logo, and and this scorpion I'm wearing, and the hat that's on your head. You designed that, am I right? Okay, so um, the Fashion Rebels logo was an evolution to begin with. Um, okay, it. When it started, the Fashion Rebels logo had, uh, I think it was like a POW patch that looked looked very similar to the shield that you see now. However, it had a horse on on the top corner of it, and then it it didn't have anything on the bottom. I think so. Um, initially, it was just the lettering that was the focus of it. The F A S, you know, the the words that go around the shield. And then uh, later on, after using the logo with the shield with the horse in it for a little while, you know, of course, that's he, you know, we don't have any um, claim to the POW flag or, you know, it was just a, a patch, a random patch that we had used. And then in order to bring it more into the, the, the feel of the brand, which is, you know, Griselda and, you know, the whole Coke movement. And, you know, that whole wave, you know, one of the stamps uh, that was on the um, drugs back in that day was a scorpion and, you know, basically replaced the horse with the scorpion, which is more attached to Griselda and less attached to POWs and MIA, you know, that whole. Um, okay. So, and and you are the person who conceived of that created yeah. that design the gxfr that yeah. scorpion okay so just so everybody recognize what's going on right here in case y'all thought i was playing and i'm checking my stopwatch right here but in case y'all thought i was playing this is exclusive um back in the day i know he was he was known as ron ski we gonna get into that y'all might hear uh west side on his live videos shout out ron ski that's this is the man he's talking about um better known as ronald reagan so yes he was the one that came up with the iconic uh, GXFR logo. So let's bounce around just a little bit. You're in Atlanta. You meet West Side Gun in high school. Um, pick it up from there if you would. Um, you know, when I was in Michigan, and I think that most teens at that point in time, you know, we were fans of, you know, hip hop music and, you know, all that. And I have a younger friend that, you know, we, we went to a gifted art school together. Um, his name is Willie the Kid. And I know we'll probably talk about him later as well, but um, me and Willie, who's also a lyricist, were, were in a group together, you know, coming up, growing up. Um, then when I moved, of course, I still had the flow and, you know, freestyles and ciphers and all that stuff. So, you know, I was a new kid at school and, you know, nobody really knew me. So I, I felt like, OK, I use this part of my talent to, you know, make myself more social. So um, I think that West Side Gun had heard about, you know, the type of rhymes and stuff that I was kicking, and he skipped his um, class and skipped his lunch period to come to my lunch period. Him and another guy, um, you know, they approached me, hey, so we hear you, you know, rap or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I rap, you know, um, 
what is this supposed to be a battle or something? What y'all trying to confront me? What is this? <laughs> and then you know, I think that the the you know West Side Gun was more like chill in the moment, and the, his. Like he took it as a challenge, so we went into the bathroom. You know, guys beating on the, um, on the stall, and you know, I, I let the guy rap first, and then when it was my my time to go next, I kind of came at Westside as well as the guy who was just rapping. So you know, like let me go ahead and take this opportunity to you know, uh, I guess you would call it rag on or, or roast, you know, both both uh, guys, and then um. You know the bell wind up ringing. You know Westside didn't get the rhyme, or he didn't he didn't say anything as a rebuttal. Wow. But um, you know we went on to our class. But later on that day, you know um, I'm leaving school and I noticed these cats standing outside. You know, waiting on me, so to speak. So you know I go outside. So you know I approach them. I'm like, so what? You know we supposed to fight over a rap battle? Like what? You know what? what what's the deal? Wow. And it was like, no, 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 it ain't no beef. You know, we 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 think you nice, you know. And I think that maybe initially that's what they were trying to approach me with in the beginning was like, no, nah, we think you good. You know, we got a little <laughs> group or whatever, and you know. You jumped the gun and you just immediately went in the battle mode. Equipment. Say it again. You just went into battle mode on them. Yeah, I, cause I didn't know, and you know, I was I was a, I was a solo guy at that time. You know, I didn't know anybody at the school. I didn't have any friends. So it was like, you know, anybody approaching me to get it. So, you know, he was my first friend in Atlanta. Like that, that was the first person to, you know, uh, basically have some camaraderie with me. You know what I mean? As far as music, as well as uh, uh, total, you know, things that don't have anything to do with rap music at all. So uh, you guys battle. You guys meet up after school. You get you decide to connect on the music side. What happens next in terms of the the beginnings of you and uh, West relationship as it pertains to music? So so because it was my senior year it was also Willie the kid's senior year, and he was planning on uh, going to Clark Atlanta for college. So he had come down. Um, as like a college tour to visit the campus and all that. And I, I introduced him to Westside because of course I know Willie is, can spit like spit spit. Yeah. But I was a super fan of Westside at the time because of the way that he would study fashion and art as well as his word play. He would study the thesaurus. So he might write a rap but then he'll go back and completely restructure the rap. Now this is back at that time. He would completely restructure the rap based off of taking words and then using a thesaurus to say the same word, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it means the same thing, but it's a totally different word. And, so then me... re and, and then restructure the things that rhyme with that word based off of the, you know, what was in the thesaurus. And you mentioned that he was big on art uh, back in it. What year is this? Uh, this was like, this was 98. Okay, 19, so in 1998, Wes is already, talk, already talking about fashion. Is that correct? Yes, he's already into fashion more so than your average person because the basics of like screen printing and stuff like that, him and him and a, another artist friend of his that lives in um, Buffalo had already been printing shirts and you know selling them to people that was in the, in the neighborhood. So you know certain aspects of it, he was he always was a businessman about it. But as far as as far as our own personal fly, you know we both you know uh, clung to like things being one of one or exclusive or you know something that so, so no one else could wear like you know we we really had an issue with ru maybe running into somebody with the same item or same you know you know uh, same piece look so to speak okay yeah and then so 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 at that point um like i said i i introduced the two guys together i, I i'm like yo he can spit 
you can spit. I know they both very like smart or, you know, in, intellectual when it comes to like rapping and stuff like that. So I wanted them two to meet one another. And then um, I lived in Atlanta, of course. I'm, I made it where those two people would know each other. And then as they both, you know, went up the ranks, of music because i didn't i personally didn't really want to stick in music i i did it for fun they did it for career i just wanted to be good at putting the words together and having like witty lines and stuff like that but they they really wanted to pursue it i wanted to pursue you know art or you know which you know basically came into just fashion but you know that was really what it was those two guys really wanted to do music and i did so I, I just made sure that they linked together. But you were in a, a group with them for a minute, right? Um, yes. Forerunners? Yes. I was, was in it? a group. It was called Forerunners. Um, it was me, Westside, this guy who um, approached me in the, at school. His name is Joe. Um, Conway, which his name was Cannon at the time. Um, Benny the Butcher trying to think he was just Benny at that time it wasn't no tail on the end of it it was just Benny um so Benny and then uh Machine Gun Black which is his um older brother Rest Conway West Side me and Joe so Forerunners was a a breakdown of four you niggas so F-O-R the, the letter U N A Z is like short for niggas. So okay, for you niggas. okay, yeah. Okay. So uh, so you know it was just you know teens rapping over beats, sending tapes back and forth from Buffalo to Atlanta, recording over the 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 music, just like that. A group. So that that real underground. Uh... Very, very underground and young. You know, we, you talking about West Side Gun at that time was 16 years old. So it was like he saw the vision and he knew that he was going to be just as good as the rappers that were in the light back then because he was rapping as good as the people that were in the light back then. So it, it, it all seemed possible because if they could do it and I'm just as good, then I can do it. So yeah, very very confident. And then so in terms of um, West coming up in Buffalo, uh, we are gonna bounce around a little bit, like I said. But I know you got a first hand account of the whole entire crew: West Side, uh, Benny, Conway. You're close to these guys still to this very day. You guys talk on a daily basis. Oh yeah, we. I, I I'm I'm very close friends with West Side. Um, I talk to him. Uh, very often um the others um i'm connected with a guy um, named city boy that is um a part of black soprano family so that's the bsf um imprint that benny is um with so i talk to him a lot and then through him i talk to benny a lot me and conway we speak you know online dm and stuff like that but i you know i don't really talk to him as far as like over the phone or anything like that no. can you give me and in this audience who i'm sure is very excited to hear your story can you talk to the audience about the beginnings of when west side and and benny and those guys is starting to make a little bit of noise in buffalo what, what okay so in the beginning that like i said that forerunner thing was just the the high school part of it but those guys be continue to get better better as you know a couple years go by so you know you thinking that was 98 about 2001 they're really good you know like they've probably done battled everybody in the city of buffalo and they're real sharp when it comes to that type of thing so it's like it was only uh, inevitable for the local, you know, recording studio or wherever they were going to record things, you know, to like notice what they were doing, notice them as like spitters. So um, 
at that time, Westside would record at one of their friends' uh, studio. His name is Spoons. Um, the name of the recording studio is Death Valley Recording. So um, I think that Westside put up an old mixtape recently that was called uh, either Westside Gun Story or uh, Flyest Nigga. The Flyest Nigga in Charge, I think, might be the one that he put up. So that was recorded at Death Valley Studios. So at the Death Valley Studios, you had another crew that Westside was a part of that Benny and Conway wasn't a part of. And that was a, a collective called Universal Street Soldiers. So it had a bunch of guys that were part of that crew that also recorded at Death Valley as well as Westside Gun on that. Um, and then once that, I guess, era was over, that time period was over, um, that whole street soldier type of name carried on into them as a group called Street Entertainment. So that is Westside Gun, Benny, or at that point he was 2 Chain Benny Main. Wait, wait, wait. Um, 2 Chain Benny Main. Yes. So, so, so when he, you say Benny Man, M A N E. Yes, M A N E. Yes. Okay. So, if you think about how many other artists came into the picture after with Maine in their name or with Two Chain in their name, I don't know if it's you know I'm not gonna sit here and act like they copy, but you know it's just this guy had the name first. That's all I'm saying. So, okay. Yeah. Like so so um. Benny, um, Cannon, Cutter, or Box Cutter, Machine Gun Black, and West Side Gun was the group, Street Entertainment. And they were, you know, a force to be reckoned with. Um, they, they put out some mixtapes in the city. They shot videos in Buffalo. Um, and they were like a hit, a local, you know, rap group that you know did pretty good people p people knew their name people knew their music and they traveled around too they actually went and you know did shows in other cities and states and stuff like that you know maybe a lot of it in upstate you know rochester and syracuse and you know that area but they were they was rocking back then 2001 to 2002 19 years ago so put me on the ground in buffalo um i i drove through buffalo uh, twice, once on the way in, once on the way out. I think I was on my way to Canada, if I'm not mistaken. I remember driving through there at the time, and I want to say it was over 15 years ago. And I just remember it looked like a bomb had hit it. It looked very grimy. It looked like a place that you don't really want to just start walking around, hanging out and chilling if you didn't know people there. So put me on the ground in Buffalo. Tell me what, what that's like. Um... I've never been to Buffalo myself personally. Um, from what I hear in its description and the, the the you know just by sitting around listening to old stories of these guys days and in, in, days out, you know, um, it re it reminds me uh, of where I'm from, which is Grand Rapids, Michigan, but maybe just a little bit less um, thriving. I think that what happened in that area is drugs hit real hard and then poverty hit real hard in the inner city. And then, you know, protesting and, you know, rioting and stuff like that, that may have happened over the course of Rodney King and, you know, other things like that. You got a lot of things burned down. You got a lot of things that, uh, you know, lack um, any type of care any type of uplifting, you know, things just go down and down and down, you know, so you might have one house on a block where you, back in the days, it was 16 houses on that block, but now you got one that's functional, then you got two vacant lots, and then you got one that's boarded up, then you got two more vacant lots, and then you got a, a corner store that don't sell nothing but beer, liquor, wine, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a desolate, you know, area, and it, they, they, of course, going to have your share of violence, your share of shootings, your share of robberies, and, of course, the ever-so-numbing drugs. 
Right. And so, and, and that brings me to an interesting point because I, I watched a video a, a while back of a guy. I don't know who the guy was. He was driving through Buffalo, giving a tour. I mean, literally in the car, camera pointed out the windshield and driving down all these blocks uh, that these guys talk about in the music. He drove down uh, May Street, uh, Montana Ave, which has become a global type of block right now due to the way Benny rep it, especially when you talk about a song like Five to 50, where he really breaks down in detail the struggles that he went through from being on the block to making it in this music industry and in another street called uh, Bailey, which I guess is the main drag down there. Um, so it's sort of amazing to watch that transformation from, and, and what you say is right, when he drove down those streets, like three or four lots didn't even have a house on it. Um, and that was, you know, every other house, it was gone. So um, it looked like they've been hit uh, kind of hard economically, but, and they're from Buffalo, not from a borough. So the fact that they made it out to, to go global like they have is sort of an amazing story. Um, talk about those guys traveling to uh, NYC, because I'm, we all want to go to NYC when we were spitters to, to go get the approval uh, at, at the Mecca, go knock on Def Jam door and all these other labels that's there. Did they go to NYC um, to seek either a record deal, a collaboration or anything of that nature early on? Yeah, early on, early on, they 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 did get a a good look from um, uh, DJ K Slay. Um, he you know acknowledged them. He did a drop on on I think their first um, mixtape or maybe the second mixtape. However, the rest of New York isn't as welcoming. You know, the rest of New York you know could could be a little biased. And I mean, it's one on one token. I understand when they where they're coming from. Like they want people from their own region to um, prosper and get into the light. You know, and I guess just rooting for a hometown hero type of feeling. But at the on the on the flip side of it, the state itself is way larger than just this small place where you guys are from. And there's people that have a lot of talent that are in other places in this state. However, you guys don't really give them a look or give them the credit or, you know, that type of deal. How did that sit um, with, with specifically, because I always look at Westside as sort of the, the mastermind of Griselda. How did that sit with Westside when he would go to NYC and maybe didn't get that love that he thought that uh, he had earned? I mean, I think that Westside is one of those people that's a thinker and what he he won't let anything stop him. So he doesn't really take things that happen as a negative connotation. Mm. He kind of just uses it as confirmation that this was this isn't the right time. So street entertainment was was the the movement early on. Did Wes own that label, or was that was that somebody else, uh, a label that he had signed to? Um. Well, street entertainment, the group still exists, and you'll hear them rap about it in current Griselda stuff. Okay. You might not hear them say street entertainment, but they'll say S E. Like if you one of those people who will go back and listen to rhymes or go through lyrics and stuff like that i'm almost positive from the any of the new stuff that i hear from them they say se all the time but that's what they mean se meaning the group and they're more like a family so it, it didn't necessarily mean that they had to be signed to anything in order for it to be a group but Westside didn't sign a recording contract for uh, street entertainment. However, the other guys in the group, they did sign a, a recording uh, contract with um, Lie Low Recording, I think is the name of it. And who was the head, who was, it was somebody that was a, a up and coming mogul in Buffalo or that? Yeah, I mean, it was a guy, it, from, from, from what I know at that point, the guy, his name is DJ Shea. He was like the conduit for all of the um, musicians and rappers and stuff that was trying to come out of um, Buffalo. He's older, a lot older than us. Um, and he was 
you know, on the scene and he had a recording studio that everybody could come, you know, and he was uh, using, utilizing his skills as someone who can produce and make beats as well as, you know, having artists right there to just go ahead and, you know, spaz out. And he always had a, a spirit of like, Buffalo got something to say, mm. you know? And then it was another guy named Lovey or Love Boat at that same point of time that was, you know, one of the facilitators of the Lilo recording studios and, you know, um, just that whole movement, helping these guys get into the light, trying to help these guys, you know, um, get more eyes on them. Is Love so Boat those bitter tours and the traveling and all that stuff, that was, you know, Love Boat and, you know, Shade together. Okay, is, is Love Boat, is he a spitter or no? No, no, but his son is a spitter. Cause his I remember son is a spitter. Yeah, there's a song. His son, that, his son is uh, connected to the BSF movement with Benny. So his son, I think his Instagram is Shooter from BSF. I think that might be it. Okay. But Love Love Boat's son is definitely ill. He's definitely, you know, and he has he has a truthful story as well as the rest of the, um, you know, guys that I'm talking about. So bouncing around a little bit, going back to the fashion, you know, I love the jacket. Let's just get real about it because I looked all over the internet for this jacket. When I seen it, I wanted it. I don't buy merch. I don't last time I bought a, somebody's merch. It was a run DMT run DMC t-shirt long time ago. So I got so excited with the fashion and, and we can go on and talk about the evolution of the fashion and how important that is the West side gun. We will get into that later, but this jacket, I can't buy one of these jackets. No, nah, you can't buy you can, It's supposed to see we, me, me and me and West side. I'm like, I'll even go back further. Okay. So the forerunners days, right? Okay. So, we we both at a high school. Everybody in the high school walking around with these varsity coats because they may play a sport, you yeah. know, or something like that. So what we did because we're not from this town, first and foremost, we're we're more um, East Coast than we are Southern. Um, secondly, and we just we care more about standing out than fitting in. Mm. So what we did was we went to the same people who made those varsity coats for the school. And we got our own custom forerunners varsity coat. So now we walking around school looking like, you know, oh my God, who was these dudes? But they already know because they know us from week to week doing some original or unique when it comes to fashion. So that jacket is just a rendition of what we always been doing anyways. Making something custom, making something that nobody can have, you know, um, wearing something that could be also looked at as art. So, and, and I relate to that, going to get the varsity jacket customized is something that also I used to do. It took me a long time before I could convince my mom to cop me one of them varsity jackets. Mine was a Notre Dame joint with my rap name on the back, which we will not talk about that rap name right now. Um, and that jacket lasted all of one day. Uh, my mom tried to put it in the closet away from me in her own in her own closet so I wouldn't fuck it up. I guess go outside and play basketball in it. My dad came home and thought, my dad used to drink a lot. He thought that jacket belonged to some nigga my mom was cheating with. I listened to him tear that bitch up with a knife when I was sleeping in the bed. I'm sidetracked. Rest in peace, Pops. I still love you. Um, and so that's the genesis of uh, y'all starting off and being unique and on your own and also West Side Gun standing out from the crowd. Oh yeah, we've we've always been fans of, you know, not wanting to look like anyone or do anything that anyone is doing. It's it's a, it's a, a motto of so to speak, like just always go against what the masses do. Do what we want to do. So on that tip, this is a question. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if everybody has the same question as me, but this is something that's been on my mind ever since I saw Wes in that iconic jacket. The Confederate flag on there. 
Can you talk to me about why there is a, a Confederate flag on there and what the significance is of that? That it threw me off. Um, well, the whole initial stage of it was, um, this is it. This is in West Side Guns' approach to the movement. Initially, was uh, controversy will sell. Controversy mm. and controversial images, stuff that invoke uh, thought, will sell. Even mm. if it's good or bad publicity, it will always, you know, get the get the eyes. And you know, it, it's no such thing as bad publicity. So. With that said, the whole Hitler wears Hermes theme was a complete oxymoron. You got Hitler, which is like this guy who hates Jews, and then you the title is saying he's wearing Hermes, which is a Jewish brand, a very high end Jewish brand for that matter. So the the rebel flag was just an uh, attachment to fashion rebels. So fashion rebels and then of course using a rebel flag which is also once it gets viewed on the visual once you get a real good focus and a, uh, a shot of it in the video or something like that now you're going to invoke a whole nother list of people that have something to say they're going to say they feelings about the confederate flag they're going to say whether they love it but no matter what the the uh the move was to put it on and then the comments the comments was what was the goal more so than the views got you got because you because people pay attention to comments they they because that's their attachment to real life they can they can attach to views too just through a, a numerical way but most people go and read comments so that was what that was okay so we're going to wrap up this portion of the interview. Uh, this may end up being a, a three-part series. Um, I do want to uh, thank you for uh, stopping in, talking to us. Of course, we're going to have a, a, another portion right after this, but I want to end this one properly um, so we stay true to form and we look professional. So uh, thank you, Ronski, a.k.a. Ronald Reagan, for joining us today. Man, we're going to be back with the uh, part two.